Okay, this one's going to be a fairly straightforward lecture. It's just about how do you actually compute eigenvectors and eigenvalues. So I'll remind you what these concepts mean. If we have a square matrix A, then an eigenvector is a vector V such that AV is a scalar multiple of V. And the scalar is called the eigenvalue. And so in the last lecture, I just had a bunch of matrices. I tell you, oh, here's an eigenvector. Here's an eigenvalue. Look, it works. And it was easy enough to check it. It works. You just did the multiplication A times V and you saw that short enough, you got lambda times V. But that doesn't answer the question of how would you have ever discovered that fact in the first place? And so we're going to answer that question today. So first of all, let's suppose that you are given A and lambda and you want to find the eigenvectors. So let's suppose somebody still tells you what the eigenvalue is. You just need to get the eigenvector. So a little bird whispers in my ear and says, hey, this matrix over here, one of its eigenvalues is three. And I say, uh, okay, what's the eigenvector? But the bird flies away. Well, it's not hard to find out what the eigenvector is. So I want to find vectors V for which AV equals lambda V. So in my example, I want this, this over on this side is A times V, and this over on this side is lambda V. And I can just subtract to put all the variables on the left-hand side. So I subtract 3x from both sides of this equation to get a minus 6x over here. And I subtract 3y from both sides of this equation to get a 5y over here. And now I have two linear equations to solve. And in general, what I want is I want A times lambda identity V to be the zero vector. So you can solve these two equations. What you'll find is you'll find that they're redundant, is that the second equation is a scalar multiple of the first equation. So they're redundant. And the solution to the first equation is that X is five halves Y. So, So some examples of three eigenvectors are five halves one, five two, 50, 20, anything, anything on the line spanned by five halves one. Okay. And in general, the set of lambda eigenvectors is the kernel of A times lambda minus lambda identity. And being a kernel, it is a subspace. We will call it the lambda eigenspace. OK, so if we're given A and we're given lambda, then we just compute the kernel of A minus lambda identity, and we find the eigenvectors. But what if we're not given lambda in advance? So if we just guess a lambda, then probably A minus lambda identity will have zero kernel, and probably there will be no eigenvectors. So we need to do something smart to find those values of lambda for which A minus lambda identity does have non-trivial kernel. Now, before I tell you how to do it, a caveat. The answer I am about to give is a reasonable one if we're doing hand computation up to three by three, maybe four by four, or if the answer matrices have some special structure. This is not what happens inside MATLAB, Mathematica, anything like that. And if your job is to build a computer system that computes eigenvalues, well, you probably want to outsource that job to somebody else and use a linear algebra library. But if you have to build it yourself, you definitely shouldn't use the method we're learning here. If you want to learn about the methods you should use, take a course in numerical linear algebra like Math 471 or 571. And of course, also just learn what the command is in NumPy or MATLAB or whatever your favorite language is. So we want to know for which lambda of a kernel of A minus lambda identity is non-zero. Well, remember, the kernel of a square matrix is non-zero exactly when its determinant vanishes. So let's take a determinant of A minus lambda identity. So here's the same example we've been using all along. We have a two by two matrix. We subtract off lambda times the identity. 
we get a square matrix with some minus lambdas in it. We take a determinant, product of the diagonal values, minus product of the off diagonal values, looks like this. And then we just do a little bit of high school algebra, and at the end of the day, it factors as lambda minus two, lambda minus three. So this is going to, so putting it all together, the kernel is going to be not of a minus lambda identity is going to be non-zero exactly when this quadratic power polynomial vanishes, which is that lambda equals two or lambda equals three. So we see that the eigenvalues of a are two and three. And just to toss out a piece of vocabulary that you need to know, this polynomial that we've just computed is called the characteristic polynomial of a. Okay, that's all for now. You'll get plenty of practice doing these computations in your homework and hopefully in your sections. Uh, we will stop here. And in the next lecture, we will talk about diagonalization.